Misa back! It's me, your favorite Star Wars girl on YouTube. Welcome all you beautiful Star Wars fans. You know, I was thinking, we've basically been having Life Day once a week for the past five weeks. It's amazing. I mean, every Wednesday morning we get up early to, to, to experience the surprises and the love and the joy that Obi-Wan Kenobi brings to us. Thank you so much, Lucasfilm. And this episode did not disappoint. No, Relentless Reva has Baby Leia and Terrific Tala trapped in like a cave. And uh, Baby Leia is in the vent doing vent things. And Terrific Tala does take one for the team. And I got very sad about that. It was very sad. But Ruthless Reva, she attempts to take down the patriarchy. She gets so, so close to doing it, but comes up a little bit short. Yeah, but she'll be back next week to give it another go. No problem at all. Go Reva! Yes, I mean, Star Wars hasn't been this good since Itchy was watching porn on Lumpy's Oculus. Hey everybody, welcome to our weekly group therapy sessions where we talk about crappy Star Wars. You know, they say there are five stages of grief and Obi-Wan Kenobi has put me firmly in stage five, acceptance. I am fully accepting that Disney Star Wars is complete and utter trash. And when you get to stage five, it feels good. You can breathe, you can let go, and it just feels good. So some of you might not be there yet. I know you're going there, but when you get there, man, it feels amazing. All right, let's talk about episode five. As always, keep your comments coming. Love to talk about this stuff with you guys. So this episode starts off rather abruptly. We're on the bridge of a Star Destroyer with Reva and Darth Vader, and Darth Vader makes Reva the new Grand Inquisitor and gives her a pin. So I'm sure they're going to sell that pin at Galaxy's Edge, and everyone can pick up that pin and feel cool. But uh, she gets a little cool pin. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi lands on Jabin. It's a planet where they're, you know, they smuggle the Jedi and they're smuggling like rebels or peasants. And Haja, our fake Jedi from an earlier episode, is there. So he's there. He's part of our crew now. How he's there, why he's there, I don't know. I don't know. Obi-Wan Kenobi tells Roken he wants to leave for Alderaan right away. Uh, but then he sees a very diverse family. And he doesn't want to leave the family, so he decides to stay and help. Darth Vader orders the lockdown of the facility that Obi-Wan is in because he controls Lola, the little robot. But Reva gets sassy and questions his judgment. Reva says, listen, if you lock down the facility, it's going to take weeks to get them out of there. And Vader says something I forget about, you know, Obi-Wan will, will, will get Obi-Wan. Don't worry about that. Now, it's kind of funny that Reva says it's going to take weeks if they lock down the facility to get to Obi-Wan Kenobi because... It takes her all of five seconds to cut the door open and get in. So we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Again, good writing. Good writing. Okay, Obi-Wan Kenobi's walking around. And I didn't understand this, but he finds a box of lightsabers and Jedi robes. I don't know. I didn't, that didn't make any sense to me. If you guys could let me know what's up with that. Uh, but as Vader orders, Lola, who has been turned bad and has the tracker in Lola, Lola shuts the door and seals in our heroes. And next up is one of many little flashback scenes we're going to get in this episode of like an episode two, Anakin Skywalker, uh, still with his braid, training with Obi-Wan Kenobi, and he's got the mullet. And, uh, you know, Anakin is very aggressively going at Obi-Wan Kenobi. It looks like they're at the Jedi Temple, and Obi-Wan Kenobi is teaching him lessons. We'll get to that. But I, I really liked this. It, it looked like they de-aged Hayden Christensen a little bit. I mean, you could still see some some wrinkles and things, but it's good enough. And I did feel like, oh, I'm watching something Star Wars. It did feel like Star Wars. I did like it. And it it reminded me what a shame this whole series is. I, I was watching Obi-Wan and Anakin, and I'm like, this is what I want to see. I want to see Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin and get more of their backstory or uh, these actors. This is what the show should have been about. But uh, no, instead we get Reva, and it's a big missed opportunity. All right, so Vader's forces arrive at the planet. They're in orbit right now, and Obi-Wan Kenobi starts to pretend he's a general and, and, and says, everybody, everybody, we're not, we can't fight them, but we can like hold out and run. And uh, he says, Roken, how long is it going to take you to open up this big door thing that uh, Lola shut? And Roken says, uh, three hours. And then Obi-Wan Kenobi goes, you have one. One hour. <laughs> and I'm like, 
Is this like Kirk talking to Scotty? It it doesn't work like that. He just said it's going to take you three hours to open up the door, and your plan is that now Roken has to open up the door in one hour. Uh, Their plan is going to be uh, to send Leia in the vent because she's small and can fit in the vent and fix whatever vent thing they need to fix. So maybe that's the reason they could speed up the timeline a little bit, but oh my god, it was so bad. It was so bad. Uh, Imperial troops do arrive at this very small front door, and this set looks terrible. Speaking of early Star Trek, it looks like a original Star Trek series set with like a little bit of a set, and then a whole backdrop is just like a curtain with lights, or oh, it just looks so fake and so small. It looks absolutely terrible. But you've got this door and this wall, and you've got all these stormtroopers standing outside it. And they've got like a gun. The gun even looks cheap. Uh, one of the extras goes, they've got a heavy gun. I mean, it, just terrible dialogue. They start to shoot the door, shoot the door. They can't get through the door. Um, and as they do get Leia to go up on a ladder into the vents, Obi-Wan Kenobi says, be careful before she goes. And I'm thinking, you know, this is another example of a problem with this series. You have a moment where someone's going to do something potentially dangerous In old, real Star Wars, they would say, Leia, may the Force be with you. And here they just say, be careful. All right, next up, Tala tells her story to Obi-Wan. At least that's what I have in my notes, but I don't remember what her story is. And it's all because Tala's going to die here in a couple minutes. So it's going to amplify our feelings for Tala. You didn't need to amplify my feelings for Tala. I already loved Tala. Uh, Obi-Wan... And Reva then talk through the door, the door that the Imperials are shooting, but they can't bust through it. Yet, Obi-Wan Kenobi goes to the door, and Reva goes to the door, and they can talk through it. Right before they were going to go to the door, I'm like, oh my god, don't don't tell me they're going to talk through the door. And they actually did it. It was so much fun this morning to watch this. Uh, And so Obi-Wan learns what we already really knew, uh, that Reva was a youngling during Order 66, and Anakin is going through killing all the younglings, and she sees Anakin, and that is how she knows Anakin is Darth Vader. Sure, sure. But she blames Obi-Wan Kenobi because his student is the one that killed all the Jedis. And she does have this agenda of getting revenge I guess not only on Kenobi, but Darth Vader himself, himself. So um, after they have that little exchange, Reva gets mad. And remember when Reva said if they lock down the facility, it's going to take weeks for them to get in? Well, Reva just busts out her lightsaber and with one slash and one force move, opens that door and gets into the facility. Awesome, awesome writing. Now, Obi-Wan Kenobi does do an awesome force move. He goes and force pushes Reva and all the stormtroopers back. So that was kind of cool. But Reva, you know, does a cool slide. She holds her stance. And, uh, you know, I was thinking, so Obi-Wan Kenobi like has a lot of force power back because that's a pretty big force push to blow everybody back. But when did he get his powers back? I mean, a couple episodes ago or an episode ago, he couldn't move a piece of metal, right? I mean, was he training or was he like meditating? I mean, shouldn't we have gotten a scene where Obi-Wan Kenobi meditates and communicates with uh, Qui-Gon Jinn, Liam Neeson? And I'm thinking, no, 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 Liam Neeson was a little bit too honest about his, uh, his feelings a while ago about black people. All right, with that door open, we have a laser battle, pew, 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 pew. I don't care. No one cares. Uh, but Tala does get hit and falls to the ground. Her robot tries to save her, and he's getting hit, and he's dying. Before she dies, she pulls out a thermal detonator and explodes and kills these stormtroopers. Obi-Wan Kenobi, he was trying to get to her, but he was overcome with laser bolts deflecting, and I guess he couldn't just pull her. No, no, he can't do that, no. Uh, So Tala's dead and takes out some people. We have that continuing flashback between Anakin and the mullet Obi-Wan Kenobi. And Obi-Wan Kenobi decides his plan is to surrender to Reva. So he gives his lightsaber and his little hologram communicator that he's been talking to Bail Organa on to Haja and he goes out and surrenders and he gets on his knees in front of Reva and he tries to seduce Reva to the light side of the force or something like that. Uh, He basically knows that Reva wants a piece of Darth Vader 
And uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi says, join me. We can take him together. Uh, I can I can lead you to Vader. Something to that effect, which didn't make a lot of sense. But Reva goes for it and basically releases Obi-Wan Kenobi with two guards back into the cave. I didn't quite understand that. And Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, quickly dispatches the guards. And so he's like free again in the cave. All right, so we get another one of these flashbacks with uh, episode two, Anakin and Obi-Wan Kenobi. And Obi-Wan Kenobi is saying, Anakin, your need for victory blinds you. So he's teaching lessons or something that they're trying to make relevant in this episode. But I don't know. Then they cut to Vader. Vader enters the cave. He's looking for Obi-Wan. He gets to the, the docking bay and there's a transport taking off. And we think, oh, there's Obi-Wan and all the people are in it. So Vader freezes it and the scene looks terrible. It looks like a video game cutscene. Most of this episode does. And he's just like freezing it, he brings it down. And then Vader uses the force to like shred the ship and there's nobody in it. But I'm like, it, it just looked bad. It, it was weird. It's like, I don't know if the force can really do that. They don't know what to do with the force at this point. So it's not that transport. We see another transport take off further away. So I guess that means Vader can't use the force. And it gets away with Obi-Wan Kenobi and all the people that we don't care about. No. Uh, then we get another flashback where uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi tells the young Anakin, your need to prove yourself is your undoing. And then he kind of talks like Yoda until... You overcome it, a Padawan you will still be. It's kind of like, yeah, Yoda talk. I don't know. It's dumb. The whole episode's dumb. All right, and this episode ends with Reva approaching Darth Vader from behind as Vader is looking at the transport leaving. And uh, Reva ignites her saber, and instead of like stabbing a quick stab like she did with the Grand Inquisitor, she ignites it and then pulls back for a big swing. Because with a lightsaber, you got to use that kinetic energy, you know? You got to actually cut and swing because you have a blade. No, it's a lightsaber. You can just basically put it on someone's back and turn it on, and it'll do the job quicker. But anyway, good writing, good writing. Vader freezes her and then basically has his way with her and slaps her around. He doesn't even ignite his lightsaber. He throws her around like a rag doll. Uh, at one point, he stops her spinning blade. I hate those spinning blades, but stops it, pulls her saber apart, what throws a piece back at her, and then just duels her a bit with her own saber. I don't know. At the end, he stabs her, and um, the real Grand Inquisitor enters the room and says, ah, you know, something about, we'll, we'll leave you where we found you in the gutter. So yes, the Grand Inquisitor's not dead. He comes back. Um, they all leave Reva to die, and Reva is not quite dead. She can crawl and crawls to, like, the hologram communicator that Obi-Wan Kenobi gave to Haja that apparently Haja dropped. And she turns it on, and then she's listening to Bail Organa talk about the boy, Luke Skywalker, and I don't know. I don't know how that message can make Reva learn that Luke Skywalker or even Leia are the children of Anakin Skywalker. I, I don't know how... I don't know. Am I missing something? Is it explained or is it just me? It doesn't feel like Reva should be able to connect those dots at all. Uh, and then it ends with like a shot of young Luke Skywalker. And then it's the end. And then we get so many credits containing so many people. I don't know how you can possibly employ that many people to make such a crappy show. And that's it. Episode 5 of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Just one more to go. I mean, I liked the flashbacks with the younger Anakin and Obi-Wan Kenobi. I wish we would have got a show with about those two. And I want to learn more about their past or even their future. But that's interesting. That, that, that was kind of good, I thought. But the rest of the show is just a series of stupid events. It, this whole series is just one event after another that doesn't make any sense. The writers write themselves into a hole and then just conveniences get themselves out of a hole into the next hole. Absolutely terrible. I think the Book of Boba Fett is better. <laughs> I, I do. I think it is better. I don't know. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. This was just terrible. Oh, thank you for your continued support. Uh, smash that like button. I mean, come on. I'm a guy wearing a bra. Please smash that like button. All right. I will see you next Wednesday. All right, everybody. Have a great day, a great week. You know what? I'm going to see you. I might jump on for a live stream this weekend. 
And so we can talk about the finale to come and our predictions. All right, so maybe I'll see you this weekend. And if not, I will see you soon. As always, I will see you on the new.